Hi everyone, so I'm from the Salesforce Trainers team and I have an overall experience of eight years in Lightning development. So this video is a refresher course in what Lightning is, what are the different parts of Lightning, how do you switch over to Lightning, and then defining your first ever custom Lightning component. So this is our all here. As you can see, this is still in your Salesforce Classic. So in order to switch to the Lightning experience, we can use this button here called Switch to Lightning Experience. But this button will just take you to the Lightning Experiences interface. But before you do that, we need to make sure that we complete a follow, up, um, I mean, a couple of prerequisite steps so that all our Lightning components and everything works fine. So the first step to do before you switch to Lightning Experience would be to enable my domain for your org. So let's go to setup and just search for my domain. So as you can see, this my domain is enabled for this org. If it is not enabled, then you would need to enter your domain name here and then click on registers. After that, you would be able to like see your domain name, whatever you register here in the URL when you are logged in. So what my domain does is this my domain allows your lightning components to run properly. If you do not enable my domain, then your lightning components will not be able to run in your org. So the second step to do is sometimes what happens is some users are not able to see this switch to lightning experience button when they log into classic. So that is because you might not have the permission to be a lightning experience user. So in order to do that, you need to go to the profile. So just type in profile here, click on profiles. And so I'm logged in as the system administrator profile. I'll go to system administrator and search for a checkbox called lightning experience user. So as you can see, this lightning experience user is checked here. So if this checkbox is not checked, then you would not be able to see this switch to lightning experience button right here. So let's go here. So you see for the system administrator profile, this checkbox is checked by default and you could not change it. But for some custom profiles, this checkbox can be unchecked. So that could be the reason why they are not able to see this switch to lightning experience button right here. So, okay, after you complete both of these steps, then you can click on this button here. It'll just switch your all to lightning. So as you can see, lightning is loading up. And now we are here in your lightning. You can allow that. And this is your lightning experience view. You have all the apps in here, like your service, sales. I can search for my sales app and go to my app, right? So now once you are switched over to your lightning experience, we can talk about what are the different parts or features of lightning. So if I go back and I refer to our website here, so Lightning is a platform which consists of the Lightning Auto framework, which is used to create single page responsive applications in Salesforce, right? So the first part of the Lightning is your Lightning experience. So Lightning experience is a single page user interface, which is responsive and designed to improve productivity and speed. So basically your lightning experience refers to this UI right here, which is uh, switched over when we switch from classic to lightning. So this follows like the single page application rules. So this is like the apportionate related list. So this is what is lightning experience. Then you have lightning components. So lightning components are an alternative to visual force pages. When you switch over to Lightning, 
and they can be used in the form of standard lightning components as well as in the form of your custom lightning components. And once you create your components, then you can use those components anywhere you want in the lightning UI pages. So after lightning components, we have the lightning app builder. The lightning app builder provides a way to create pages via point and click for admins, as well as it acts as a container for our lightning components. So if I go back to the lightning UI and I go to, let's say setup, I can go to setup and in my quick find box in the lightning setup, I can search for lightning app builder. So you can click on this lightning app builder and you can click on new and you can create like your lightning pages from here. So let's say we create one page for example and you can just you can choose the different different formats or the standard or custom formats for this so you do a one vision page then this is a lightning app builder you can drag and drop your standard components here, which is which are these, like all the standard components. And once you create any custom components properly, those custom components will also be able to be displayed here. So this is about your Lightning App Builder. Then you have your Experience Builder. So the Experience Builder allows you to create communities we can search for communities in here. And so the, you can, in order to create communities, you first need to enable your communities in your org. So we do this and then you have to enter a domain name here. But once you enable the communities, then you are able to build out communities using this experience right there. Then, the next point is your lightning framework. So your lightning framework is the core or a framework which is used to create your lightning components and which consists of all the code and apex classes and all that stuff. Then the last point is your Salesforce lightning design system. So this is a CSS library which is made, used to make your custom components uh, more beautiful, more responsive, and more like the standard Lightning UI, if you say. So, okay, now we move on to creating your custom Lightning components for your org. So in order to do that from your Lightning or Classic UI, you need to open your developer console. So we click on the developer console from here. So this here is your developer console, which will be used to create your first lightning component. So you need to go to file, new, and oops, go to your lightning component. Let's just name it my first component for now. We can forget about all these checkboxes for now. We don't need to worry about all of them and you just click on your submit. So this is the markup which is provided by default while creating your component. So inside this markup, you can write in hello world and click on save by control S. So this is our component already created. So you should be able to see that all the tags inside this component or a component are prefixed by the aura prefix. 
this signifies that this is the part of the aura framework so now we have created this component we, but we do not have the way to see this component in action so if we want to preview or view this component in our ui we need to create a lightning application which you can create by going to new and then going to your lightning application and you can name it my first application and again just click on submit so this is your application which is created so if you can see that there is a preview button in here and once i click on this preview button it'll actually show me whatever i put inside the application so let's say i put anything like test one two three and i click on save then i click on update preview so you should be able to see that it is two to three is printed so but i want to print out this lightning component the hello world component that i just created so how i do that is i go back to the application and this is the syntax that we use the syntax is c colon and then your component name which is going to be my first component and you click on save now if you go back to your application you'll see that the hello world was printed so this is how you reference your lightning components in your markup and so this part is straightforward this is the name of your component but this c this represents the namespace inside your org so what namespace is the namespace is used to identify if this component belongs to your organization or not so for an example let's say if you have a lightning component which was brought over to your org by a managed package so you would be using the managed package namespace like this and then you will be putting the name of the component there and then do work like that but if the component has been created inside your own org, then we can use C to refer to the default namespace and the component name right here. Okay, but now if I go back to the component and I change the text to anything, if I go here and refresh the application, you would see that the text is updated here as well. Also, if I copy this and print this out multiple times, then for each time I put the component here, you will see a hello one, two, three exclamation being printed when I preview this application, which is like this. So this same thing is printed four times because I've used the component four times in here. Now, the question is, you can, do we always need to create an application to preview my lightning component? So the answer to that question is yes, you do need to create an application every time you want to preview a component but you do not need an application in order to use your component in your lightning ui so let's say i want to use this component in my lightning ui i don't need to create an application i can directly use the component here let's do see how we do that right now so now if we want to use this lightning component in one of our pages, what we need to do is we need to go back to the component and then inside the aura component attribute, we need to add a couple of things. So you need to implement this flexi page dot available for all page types attribute here. And you need to define the accesses global. 
so that this component can be used even if we package this to multiple orgs as well. So you add these to this component and you click on save. So doing this will not change anything in the actual view of the component. So it still prints hello one, two, three. But now let's say this is my service cloud homepage, right? Or let's go to the sales page. I see here and now I can use the lightning app builder. If I want to change this page with the app builder, you can click on this wrench here and click on edit page. So now you'll see that this is our standard page for the sales app. And if I scroll down, you'll see our custom component that we just created visible here. So you can drag this component and put it wherever in your org and then click on save. Then you'll need to click on activate to make this page visible to all your users. Then you can go back to the same page. And now let me see why that did not work. Okay, we the component we place did not get saved. So we place it again. We click on the save. Then we click on activate. Now, yeah, we need to assign this as the org default. Click on save. Now we can we go back. So now you see that our custom lightning component has been added to this page right here. So this is how you can create your first lightning component and use it in your lightning UI on your standard pages. All right, so that's it guys. That's it for today's session and let's meet again in the future.